This is a Land Rover 109 roadless or to give it its more well considering they don't make that many or uh, make that many adaptions of it and modifications from a sort of a standard model if you can call it that to this we'll call it the common name as a forest rover it's not a scale model uh, it's been built from just looking at mainly one picture and latterly a few other pictures there's been a bit of guesswork and a bit of uh, artistic license I suppose but all the major details, I suppose, the main details, are there. Some work, some don't. Some work in odd ways. And say, with other things, I've uh, scratched my head a bit and uh, tried this, tried that. The reason I'm doing this video now, this is jumping the queue big time, is because I've been asked quite a few questions. Not necessarily about the model, but is it a set or a kit? Meccano official kit. Well, no, it's not. If I had to put it into instructions, you can forget it, because I... <laughs> It took 40, 45 hours to build, and that was over something like 18 months, perhaps two years. I got into it alright, and I'd, I've completed the front end, the chassis, put the motor in, and that took a bit of fiddling around, and got the drive to the front wheels, and I got the cab done. The roof kept coming on and going off, and kept going on and going off, as things changed, I needed to do things, added a bit of detail, basic detail, and not in any way scale, such as the steering wheel. And actually the steering wheel was one of the most hardest things to do. It was probably one of the last things I did. And to get something in there that either looked realistic-ish or looked something like the right size at least. Or looking at it the other way, using parts that you can still get more or less now. Not so much in the very latest sets perhaps, but recent sets. I did sort of like stumble on a rule, at least to start with. But I'll come on to that in a bit because it involves some of the, not very recent sets now, but two, three years old sets that uh, started the build, but I'll show you those in a bit. So anyway, Forest Rover, we've got, oh, I don't know, 70%, maybe more, of the body is created by using parts available, uh, at least the standard size strips, width strips, not so much the narrow stuff, although some of them are, in these sets, there are older parts, of course. We have brass gears. We have a, a what is it, a six and a half inch, I think, axle underneath. The wheels and tyres are sort of well, going on the black, I suppose. That's 1950s. But a lot of the bodywork, they are parts that are largely available in these couple of sets. The blue lights or the dummy blue lights are not as intended as it were. Those were put on for the recently issued little sort of festive story I put together over about another 30, 40 hours. Sort of a um, video comic strip, if you like, called Rescue Rovers. Bit of fun, certainly frustrating at times. Lily got fed up completely about halfway through. Don't know how many times I checked, there were some mistakes at the end of it, but some people have told me this is, is well, I don't want to sound big-headed like this, it was brilliant. I don't want to say it was brilliant, but it was, for the most part, fun to do. So those lights wouldn't be on. Going back to the real thing, the Forestry Commission had at least two of these, possibly eight, and there's only a few of these left around now anyway. The Dunsfell Collection have got one, maybe two actually, and I've seen one on the internet, I think it's either Australia or New Zealand, but that's very, very vague. In, in basic description, it's a Land Rover with uh, tractor tyres and wheels on it, uh, giving it a lot more ground clearance, which unfortunately mine doesn't have because of the way I've had to cram the gears into a small space so I've ruined the ground clearance at the front really and and before I put the low bay area on at the back it did move a little bit <laughs> for some some way not very far on three volts the prop shaft between the two axles that axle was a little bit bent so I've changed that for a it was a two-piece actually I had to join it because I haven't got one long enough again trying to use not not really a rule as I said, but trying to use parts that are perhaps still available now or fairly recently. Not all of it though, I mean I had to use a coupling to join the two parts. So obviously the brass couplings are not available anymore. But you could build a lot of this with stuff that's been available over the last say two or three years. I changed the axle and I didn't try it, I had to get on with the build. The front end was done, the cab was done. And that was the hardest bits really. Trying to make curves in a fashion out of straight or angled pieces uh, without bending, without um, modifying 
or butchering parts and as I say in the main most of the parts probably 90% of the parts are modern or still available within the last two or three years hopefully once I convert the battery box to a 6 volt we'll get a better performance it doesn't have to do it'd be nice if it went uphill and down dale but as long as it pulls its own weight quite nicely that's fine if I remember right it's got about 120 something to 1 ratio single speed forward and reverse with the switch on the battery box no steering because it's a lot harder to do your four wheel drive with uh, steering I wouldn't say it's impossible at this size but it would be very tight initially I was going to use more modern wheels and tyres which are still available in some sets now with different tyres but same wheels or same size wheels but it was just they were just too small but I did start with those on the front you see we've got a winch it does work but not driven by the motor under the bonnet which I'll show you in a bit those who have seen my other video with the Land Rover 90 V8 it can be driven with the Meccano battery operated screwdriver which is not really very good for a screwdriver but for things like this it can be quite useful and basically it's driven from the other end there by using the Allen driver we've got headlights represented here by half inch plastic pulleys white ones available in the still available I don't know about exactly current but the still available uh, rally cross I think rally cross buggy looking radio control set there's quite a few in uh, in that set and that set is currently available for about 20 quid complete and it's either Smith's toy shop or Toys R Us I think mirrors fabricated by using uh, standard fish plates and uh, narrow angle and obtuse angle brackets the smaller uh, parking lights side lights uh, we've got um, a narrow angle bracket, nut and bolt, and around the nut and bolt, you basically screw the bolt through it, is a small, almost uh, see-through, little white-ish uh, grommet. Uh, we don't have opening doors. The actual structure of the cab at the top is a little bit, not as good as I'd like it, but you can see the odd angles to try and replicate the windscreen. It means that... A lot of holes don't, well, some holes don't line up just to get those angles like these here. But we do have the steps. We do have a representation of the fuel filler cap there with the large rubber grommet around the bolt. Again, similar to the head, the little marker light, so we'll just screw a bolt through, really. We've got the wheels held on by the real way, really. Behind the wheels, acting as a hub, we've got a, a bush wheel. And the wheels are itself a turn around from the normal way, so the collar or the boss really is sticking out if you go on the mechanozone.com forum and the facebook page there's a picture of the real thing or one of the real things and this sort of replicates the same sort of center part of the uh, wheels in a in a fashion but the wheels are held on with uh, nuts on studs bolts put through from the bush wheel to there there's only four there should be at least five on the real thing well that's a standard load driver there may be more steering wheel as I say that's in there it's too big in the wrong place was about all I could do to fit it in regular viewers and certainly people on the Facebook page you know I don't like using reproduction stuff there is a little bit of leeway from our point of view with rubber things especially tires you know these tires here they're probably what I don't know 50 60 years old they go rock hard or they crack bit of a pointer with tires this old if they're on a pulley, leave them on, don't take them off, you'll probably find they disintegrate. Or the little rim bit inside of the tyre, the moulding that actually fits inside the pulley, that might come off and then they won't go on very well again. Um, and then at the end, sooner or later, you will, or we will, have to buy reproduction stuff. And indeed, there were some nice looking tractor style sort of dumper truck tyres available when I started this. Never ordered them, and when I come to order them, they weren't doing them anymore. You may just see inside the cab here and if I come round here, here, the backs of the seats made out of uh, one and a half inch by one inch girders, uh, flat girders that is, and you can't see but there's uh, trunnions as well. There's also some representations of the levers you get in the real thing, so you've got your normal gear lever, you've got uh, handbrake, and uh, high and low, not anything really like the real thing, but there are the right number of levers there in a fashion. The bonnet does open. The bonnet was created with, uh, I don't know, 1970s two and a half inch square plate. And the triangular plates are from the small five model construction site set. 
Uh, so there's a slight difference in the yellows. And there you are. Used uh, modern Meccano hinges. They're the same as the old, but m more modern, more recent. They are a bit stiff, so I'll put them all on them. And because of the closeness of the body and the, or rather what they call, what we call the bulkhead, Land Rover call it the scuttle, this front piece here, uh, and the type of hinges, I've had to put the hinges fixed to the bonnet underneath, and I've had to space them out, effectively raise the bonnet at the back to give me enough clearance to open it this much. What I did forget and I meant to do was the little bonnet uh, support stick. To be honest, I'd have to bring that out as well to clear the sides, and it would be pretty ugly really. As I said, the hinges are stiff, so they do hold the bonnet there. It's quite light, it's just narrow strips underneath, and those plates on the top. There's the uh, bog standard 3 stroke 6 volt Meccano motor. Bit of a tight squeeze to get in. Had a lot of fun trying to get that right and getting enough clearance on the gears so they didn't mesh too closely and obviously not too far away so they didn't mesh at all. That was quite awkward, mainly because of the constraints of space. This is a problem with freestyle models. There's a lot of trial and error. I could have simplified the chassis if I'd have used more parts from other periods, other sets, like longer strips to form the main chassis rails from front to back for example. In this case I uh, extended them and layered them as necessary. There's no strip longer than nine holes. Here we have the front and as you can see we've got two steps here. Those started out as um, partly um, the same parts or almost the same parts. Double brackets if I remember right but the standard width and they were just too bulky. Those are double brackets but they're um, essentially one inch by half inch by one inch. So like a U-shape there like that. A little bit pulled in to fit between some brackets underneath for the front cross member and the winch bracket as it were. But not too bad and look a lot neater than the original version. Underneath you can see the bit that I'm probably least happy with and that's the drive to the front axle which comes down the large gear you see is a 60 tooth gear if I remember rightly and then you can see the worm gear now using that 60 tooth gives you a reasonable reduction anyway after the worms really do uh, but of course it is quite low to the ground and I haven't got a massive amount of gears I've got a lot of the common stuff and that, that goes for all my st stock of parts really I may have a lot but some of it's not particularly good condition and uh, most of it is very common. This support across the front here, you see at the top of the screen, um, I thought about using a strip for that, that's just like a, a, a bit of a, a support to support these large, rather ungain wings uh, on the real thing. Yes, it's a lot thicker than the real thing in, in the scale, if you like, but uh, not bad and an easy little modification to do. Now, here we are, focusing on the bulkhead or the top of the bulkhead here you can maybe just see we've got another strip underneath there there's a three hole narrow strip there one and a half inch long and uh, although it's hidden and not correct at all those layered strips one there and one there represents the vents that open on Land Rovers pre-2007 if I remember they are somewhat hidden by the need to secure the Bonnet hinges to those through there. So it's not a scale model really this bulkhead needs to be taller But it's all pretty much in proportion Here's that back end or the side of it and this is the bit I thought about changing on the photograph I used in the main this uh, rear load bay area had um, almost like Like well like it's shown really you've got a bottom piece uh, with supports a narrow bottom piece of support and a narrow top piece forming like an edge. The only way I could do it really was like I've done it. Not really representative of the real thing exactly. It's far too tall. It would probably look more like the real thing if I dispensed with the top rail and of course all the way around which would mean changing probably the uh, door at the rear which I'll show you in a bit. That little uh, tailgate. So here we are the rear of the vehicle. This is where Along with the low bay area, certainly inside the low bay area, there was quite a bit of guesswork and artistic license. I wouldn't be surprised if no one of these, in reality, were the same. Certainly there were some earlier versions with big curved mug guards. The later versions got, like this one, which I've gone on, got square mug guards. In all honesty, the rear low bay should be slightly wider than the cab, but the limitations of Meccano, I would need, like, I think it was a 10L, 10L strip. And of course that's 
that doesn't happen I don't think at all but uh, yeah a bit of guesswork regarding the outer mount the rear wheel so I've gone with what I know from uh, using the real thing and others but before we get on to the spare wheel I did post a picture on the Facebook page these pushing quick snaps that are in several sets now they represent the rear lights and indicators uh, far better looking than the 101 which I I haven't done a video on plenty of photographs of it where I've used the small plastic spacers in the relevant colors to represent the lights so that's a very good plus point for the quick snaps doing your lights with them you know small lights bright lights indicators that sort of thing go back to the spare wheel I did use a quick snap on that as well and it's used for a little clip so this is a moving spare wheel carrier we've got a pivot on the bodywork there's a hinge there that can pivot up and down as well don't want to do it too much we've got a little bracket here that also pivots there and there it doesn't really have to pivot much now it's in its sort of fixed or almost fixed place it's, it's common place if you like to get the wheel off by the way just take that nut off there and this quick snap when it's like that as you can see the camera sort of side on clips nicely over the door here I nearly had a scream and throw it up the wall moment when I realised that there wasn't enough clearance um, for the tailgate past these nuts but a bit of adjustment and there is just and I'll show you that so it's a, it's a little bit well forced really but not too bad it's like a graze rear towing hitch there and fitting the rear body this was all built rather like the real thing the, the rear tub as we call it uh, the whole thing was made in one starting with one mud guard and proceeding to build up and across as it were and again and uh, the door come la last but it's very close to the bolt heads that hold the cab together in part and because the cab was done and structurally sound I didn't actually need some of the nuts and bolts that I got in and I managed to get it as fairly close it did entail filling the gaps down the side with half inch by one inch angle brackets and it's a little bit odd but it's better than having nothing there the layering of parts meant that the actual rear tub assembly doesn't quite line up with the double angle strips that form the cross members in the chassis you'll be able to see those in a bit however there's enough play in the system and with a little bit of an adjustment by tilting at least one of the cross members just a fraction back towards the vehicle meant that the holes lined up nicely it weighs as a guess something close to two bags of sugar I would say there's the four wheel drive system very basic in, at least in connecting both axles that bit's very basic the other end uh, the front end is yeah, well, I won't say it's complicated your main trouble is the space that you haven't got but you can see the chassis in its entirety there it is layered here and there to extend it I built it so far and then you think oh it don't look right so I did a bit more and then I did a little bit more and then a little bit more the cross members here that one is tilted slightly at an angle twisted if you like that way uh, just a fraction just a fraction just aligns the rear bolts to secure the tub at the rear this one hasn't moved much at all the initial gear is a 15 tooth onto a 25 tooth I think it is pinion down to a 12 tooth plastic gear didn't want to use plastic gears there but I had to because the only ones I got with 12 teeth 60 tooth then we got the worms at each end and then there's two 12 tooth pinions again plastic I suppose the benefit of the plastic is it will keep it slightly quieter I suppose but I was going to use plastic worms so I've only got one uh, with uh, a boss on uh, so that's like a it's a black one so it's sort of like mid 90s I suppose the other one is a evolution set a modern evolution set one which no boss at all that's no good to me with the original axle which was joined here with a collar to give it the full length it did work it moved I don't know about a foot and because the axle was wonky it used to jam up but it is really quite a basic construction nothing too fancy so there you can see the gears coming off the rear of the motor you can just see the small 15 tooth pinion onto the I think it's 25 tooth about 3 quarter inch anyway across the face down to the small 12 tooth plastic gear to the 60 tooth and the worm goes on to another 12 tooth and that's the same at the rear as for the sets I was telling you about that started the project although it wasn't really a rule that I was going to use only these sets and obviously you can tell by just say the brass gears this isn't the case this set is 
is the basis, or parts in this set are the basis for this Forest Rover. And this was around about late 2013, 2014, and it was the best set for a long time. Arguably still the best set of the more traditional stuff. What goes for traditional now, of course, with a lot more plastic. And not just plastic, but chunkier plastic parts. Although well made, but they are a bit of a head scratcher to know what to do with them to make other things. These sets were about 20 quid, and they're fantastic sets. No motor. There is a couple of models with some issues, but it's such a... I don't know. I suppose there's a bit of rose tinted glasses there as well because the yellow and the zinc is sort of our colour scheme when I was a, a kid and it was second hand then and old then but that's the sort of stuff I had it mostly. I must have bought 10 or 12 of these sets when they were readily available. You can probably still pick them up, bear in mind people, some people on Amazon or advertised via Amazon and of course eBay, they after that person who don't know what doesn't know what they're buying and they're going to fleece you. So this set's no longer available but to my mind it, it shouldn't have really, it's, it hasn't gone up much if anything really so if it's new and sealed, 20 quid and a couple of quid post, fine. Above that, start to think. That wasn't the only set, of course. This was the this is the instruction book from the other set that I used. Multi-model sort of off-road vehicle set, or the main model is off-road. Again, not a bad set, and in fact the motor for this model come from this set, the silver one. Not bad, not as good as the 10 model, I don't think, although it does have the motor. Again, not available now like that, at all like that. There is an off-road set or two, two versions of that really, over the last, what, six months. So these two sets, or two of these sets, were the initial sets I used for the build and continued with that and then latterly, well, much earlier than latterly really, using the same sort of sets. So those sets sort of started the ball rolling as it were and whilst I might have had to have dug into a set to dig out the odd part if I hadn't got anything in stock, a lot of the parts did come from stock but certainly the initial chassis and, well the front of the chassis, motor mounting, that sort of thing, was all done with parts from this set. As I say, majority of parts are available in these sets. Not every part of course, so you know, don't take that as gospel. Right folks. I've put some batteries in, only 3 volt and they're not new batteries either. They're a little bit hesitant on the back end, which would you guess there's a bit of play in the system I would say. Um, it's going to be fairly noisy, but it's made worse by the fairly hollow wooden boxes that is uh, supporting it. It's quite difficult to get it up off the floor without catching some of the drive. So that's reverse. Let's try forward. Probably better forward than reverse, that's unusual. I can see that rear tyre is a little bit wonky. But, um, yeah, it's going to need 6 volts and probably a prayer. <laughs> Fingers crossed and all that. Yeah, something's uh, I think some near the mouth is struggling a little bit. Probably one of the axles is not quite straight, but it's ain't bad from the camera. Uh, not uh, the age of wheel one axle anyway. Um, still, I do hope it will pull its own weight on six volt because seeing that many powered Land Rover models, some large. But scale models really, we probably work in gearboxes and they've even got a non-mechano motor in. It's got quite a bit of torque but won't pull its own way. So, you know, it's wasting isn't it? It's a nice representation granted but, you know, it'd be nice if you're going to go to all that effort to build a scale model you'll make one that can pull its own way. Let's hope this one does. I think the problem is there's a bit too much play there. Whether it's coming loose I'll have to check but uh, that axle seems to be running pretty true actually. So there we are folks, the Land Rover 109 Roadless Forest Rover. Build time approximately 40-45 hours. Nothing overly complicated, just the size making it a little fiddly. That's it for this one. I haven't got a clue what the next one will be. There are so many model builds and set reviews, old and new. I'll try and get round to doing a little bit more of them. Now uh, we're in the winter time and uh, there's a lot less things to do in regards to motorcycling and biking and things like that. So um, anyway, I hope you have a good new year and see you again soon.